The modern development of the finite element method began in the 1940s in the field of structural engineering with the work by Renikoff in 1941 and McHenry in 1943, who used a lattice of line, one-dimensional, elements, bars and beams, for the solution of stresses in continuous solids. In a paper published in 1943 but not widely recognized for many years, Courant proposed setting up the solution of stresses in a variational form. Then he introduced piecewise interpolation, or shape, functions over triangular subregions making up the whole region as a method to obtain approximate numerical solutions. In 1947 Levy developed the flexibility or force method, and in 1953 his work suggested that another method, the stiffness or displacement method, could be a promising alternative for use in analyzing statically redundant aircraft structures. However, his equations were cumbersome to solve by hand, and thus the method became popular only with the advent of the high-speed digital computer. In 1954 Argyris and Kelsey developed matrix structural analysis methods using energy principles. This development illustrated the important role that energy principles would play in the finite element method. The first treatment of two-dimensional elements was by Turner et al., in 1956. They derived stiffness matrices for truss elements, beam elements, and two-dimensional triangular and rectangular elements in plane stress and outlined the procedure commonly known as the direct stiffness method for obtaining the total structure stiffness matrix. The phrase finite element was introduced by Clough in 1960 when both triangular and rectangular elements were used for plane stress analysis. A flat, rectangular plate bending element stiffness matrix was developed by Maloche in 1961. This was followed by development of the curved shell bending element stiffness matrix for axisymmetric shells and pressure vessels by Grafton and Strom in 1963. Extension of the finite element method to three dimensional problems with the development of a tetrahedral stiffness matrix was done by Martin in 1961, by Gallagher et al. in 1962, and by Maloche in 1963. Additional three dimensional elements were studied by Argyris in 1964. The special case of axisymmetric solids was considered by Clough and Rashid and Wilson in 1965. Most of the finite element work up to the early 1960s dealt with small strains and small displacements, elastic material behavior, and static loadings. However, large deflection and thermal analysis were considered by Turner et al. in 1960 and material nonlinearities by Gallagher et al. in 1962, whereas buckling problems were initially treated by Gallagher and Padlog in 1963. Zinkiewicz et al. extended the method to viscoelasticity problems in 1968. In 1965 Archer considered dynamic analysis in the development of the consistent mass matrix, which is applicable to analysis of distributed mass systems such as bars and beams in structural analysis. With Maloche's realization in 1963 that the finite element method could be set up in terms of a variational formulation, it began to be used to solve non-structural applications. Field problems, such as determination of the torsion of a shaft, fluid flow, and heat conduction, were solved by Zinkiewicz and Cheung in 1965, Martin in 1968, and Wilson and Nickel in 1966. Further extension of the method was made possible by the adaptation of weighted residual methods, first by Sabo and Lee in 1969 to derive the previously known elasticity equations used in structural analysis and then by Zinkiewicz and Parikh in 1970 for transient field problems. It was then recognized that when direct formulations and variational formulations are difficult or not possible to use, the method of weighted residuals may at times be appropriate. For example, in 1977 Linus A. Al. applied the method of weighted residuals to the determination of magnetic field. In 1976, Belichko considered problems associated with large displacement nonlinear dynamic behavior, and improved numerical techniques for solving the resulting systems of equations. For more on these topics, consult the texts by Belichko, Lou, Moran, and Chrisfield. A relatively new field of application of the finite element method is that of bioengineering. 
This field is still troubled by such difficulties as nonlinear materials, geometric nonlinearities, and other complexities still being discovered. Thank you. Please like and subscribe to my channel.